Tim Girls. On behalf of the Loyal Orange Institution, I want to bid each one and every one of you a very warm welcome to our 12th of July demonstration here in Maverifelt on this the 323rd anniversary of the Battle of the Boyne. As always, it was great to see friends and supporters as well as a few who might not regard themselves as our friends or our supporters watching our parade as it made its way through town. As I look over the years, I have many memories of happy twelfths in years gone by, and I have to say that I wouldn't miss it for the world. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else on this day. Fashions change, and times change, and that constant change is reflected in our parades too. But to me, there is something almost timeless about the 12th. And as tourists and others who see it for the first time will tell you, there's really nothing to compare with the sights and the sounds, the colour and the pageantry of the 12th. We all know about the opposition to the 12th from those who would describe themselves as concerned residents. But there are also those in the Protestant community who sneer at the 12th, who look down upon it and who boast that they would do anything and go anywhere to avoid it. I find it sad that some within our Protestant community are so reluctant to take any interest in their past or indeed to praise God for past deliverances. We have a biblical mandate and also a solemn responsibility to remember our past and to give thanks to Almighty God for what He has done for us. And what and that is why we are here today. In 1688 our nation was threatened by sinister forces which would have reversed the Protestant Reformation and denied the people their hard-won civil and religious liberties. The clock would have been turned back and the light of the Holy Bible would have been replaced with the darkness of Romanism. But God is our sovereign and in answer to the prayers of the people he has raised up a deliverer, William, Prince of Orange, who came to our shores in November 1688 with his famous motto, the liberties of England and the Protestant religion I will maintain. And over the next few months, William secured our civil and religious liberties and established the Protestant monarchy we have today. We must make sure that we continue to remember, remember 1690. I have to make it very clear from this platform today that as an institution, our loyalty is to a Protestant monarchy that is reflected in our resolutions every year. There must be no change to the Bill of Rights of 1688 and to the Act of Settlement of 1701. Our Protestant monarchy has worked well for 300 years. It has brought stability and civil and religious liberty to our nation and we tamper it with it at our peril. Last year, of course, was a very important year in the life of our present monarch, for she celebrated her diamond jubilee. As an institution, we, we joined with Her Majesty and all loyal subjects everywhere 
in the celebration of 60 years of her reign. In the 61 years now we have seen so many changes, but throughout them all, Her Majesty the Queen has been a source of stability, of hope and confidence to us all. Some of our brethren and our friends here today will no doubt remember the Queen's father, the late King George VI. But for some slightly younger, Her Majesty is the only monarch we have known. It seems as if she has always been there. We do indeed wish Her Majesty well for many years to come. By September 2015 she will surpass her great-great-grandmother Queen Victoria as the longest ever reigning monarch. And so God willing we look forward to that special event. From this platform every year we conclude with the national anthem and I am sure that today it will be sung with greater gusto and enthusiasm than ever. Last September also marked another very important centenary and this one is perhaps the most important of them all. The signing of the Ulster Solemn League and Covenant in September 1912. 100 years ago Ireland's place within the United Kingdom was under threat as never before and the demands of home rule were getting louder and louder. The Protestant and Unionist people of Ulster feared for their future. It was without doubt a day of great crisis. Our fathers knew that home rule would be Rome rule and so for their own sake and that of their children they knew that they were duty bound to resist it to the death if necessary. Drawing from their rich Scottish covenanting heritage, the people bound themselves together in a solemn league and covenant. On Ulster Day, 28 September 1912, it was signed by nearly 240,000 men and two, over 234,000 women signed the declaration. The wording of the covenant reminds us of the terrible dangers our fathers faced, but it also reminds us that they placed their trust not in men, but in the Lord. On the Sunday before Ulster Day, a day of prayer and humiliation was called by the Protestant churches and the solemn assemblies were held all over the country on the morning of Ulster Day itself. Their motto was for God and Ulster and that must remain our motto today. They trusted in the Lord and we must do the same today. We rejoice that 100 years on from those dark days we are still part of the United Kingdom the efforts down the years by our enemies to cajole us, to bomb us, to force us into a united Ireland have come to nothing. The Union today is stronger than ever and in 2021 we will celebrate the centenary of the state of Northern Ireland. But as we rejoice in these things let us never forget to give all the praise to Almighty God. As we gather here today in Mahrafelt, we give thanks to Almighty God for past deliverances. He has been our help in ages past, in 1690 and in 1912 and on many other occasions. And he is our hope for years to come. Let all of us members and friends and supporters of this institution rededicate ourselves today to stand firm for our Protestant faith and principles in an ever-changing world. Let us rededicate ourselves to serve, to follow and to trust our God in the years 
and in the battles to come. And let all the Protestant people of Ulster rededicate themselves to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed my pleasure to invite to our platform